Dujia, we're really poor. Mom doesn't have any money to buy you a satchel. When you grow up and earn money, you can buy whatever you want, okay? Mm -hmm. I was born to a poor Mom, rural family. Wait a and ever since I was young, I was looked down upon by others. Because my family was poor, I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. And from a young age, I always wore my sister's hand-me-downs. The clothes swam on me. My classmates all made fun of me and didn't even want to be associated with me. My childhood was really painful. With a worn-out satchel on her back, don't you think she's funny? Yeah, she's so poor. Look how poor she is. Let's go. From that moment on, I resolved to myself, when I'm grown up, I'm definitely going to earn lots of money. I'll have good times and no one will look down on me again. Because my family was poor, before graduating from junior high school, I was forced to give up my studies to go do temporary work in the county pharmaceutical factory. To earn even more money, I would often do an additional shift until 10 in the evening. Later, I heard that my older sister could earn what I earned in a month selling vegetables in just five days. I immediately quit my job at the pharmaceutical factory to sell vegetables. After a while, I realized it was easier to make money selling fruit, so I went into the fruit business. After I got married, my husband and I opened a restaurant. I thought to myself, I'll make even more money running a restaurant. Once I have money, I'll be able to live a grand and dignified life. I'll finally be the envy of others and they'll think highly of me. But after managing the business for a while, I found that we couldn't make much money running a restaurant. I started to worry. When will I finally live the life of a rich person? What can I do? In 2008, a random opportunity came up. I heard a friend say that in Japan, what you earn in one day is roughly equal to 10 days' wages in China. When I learned this, I was overjoyed. I thought that finally I had found a good opportunity to make money. It's expensive, but worth it. Oh, really? Although the agent's fees to go to Japan was expensive, I thought to myself, no pain, no gain. We could do that. As long as we had jobs in Japan, we'd be able to make the money back quickly. No pain, no gain. Let's have a try. And so my husband and I decided then and there to go to Japan. Once we arrived in Japan, I threw myself into my work. Every day, my husband and I worked at least 13 or 14 hours. The pressure at work was intense and I was exhausted all day. When the workday was over, all I wanted to do was to lie down and rest. I didn't even give a thought to my eating. My health couldn't stand up to the quick tempo of my life. But then I thought about the fact that if I gave it all I had, after a few years, I'd finally be well off. I encouraged myself. Although the work is hard now, later on, life will be beautiful. I have to stick with it. This is how I summoned all my strength every day. I was like a money-making machine, going all out in my work. Unexpectedly, in 2015, I collapsed with exhaustion from the strain of the work. I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, you have a slipped disc in the lumbar vertebrae, which is pressing down on a nerve. And if you continue to work, it could lead to paralysis, after which you wouldn't be able to look after yourself. The doctor's words hit me like a lightning bolt right out of the blue. And after listening to him, I felt weak all over, all at once. My life had just been getting brighter as I grew closer to my dream. I never thought that I would get sick like this.
I wouldn't accept it. And I thought to myself, I'm still young. If I just grit my teeth, I'll be able to put up with being just a little bit unwell. If I don't earn enough money now, and I go back to China with so little, won't I be embarrassed? And so, I gritted my teeth and dragged my sick body to work to keep making money. But only a few days later, I was so unwell, I couldn't even crawl out of bed. While I was lying in my sick bed, oh, how I wished that I had someone by my side to keep me company. But my husband had to go to work, and our son had to go to school, so I had to face this on my own. Looking around the sick ward at all of the patients, each struggling with their own pain, I felt forlorn. How could I have found myself in such a terrible situation? Could it really be true that I was going to be paralyzed and bedridden? There was a feeling in my heart that I just couldn't express, and I couldn't help pondering. What does man live for after all? Could it be just to make money and live well? Can you really be happy if you have money? Is it worth it to wear yourself out to make money? After nearly 30 years of pushing myself to the limit, what did I have to show for it? I had worked in a pharmaceutical factory, sold fruit, run a restaurant, and even come to Japan to work. Along the way, although I had made some money, yet it came with so much bitterness that I had no way to express. I had thought that by coming to Japan to work, my beautiful dream could be realized. That I would quickly become a wealthy person and live a life that others would envy. But now, I was laying in a sick bed and facing spending the rest of my life in a painful existence confined to a wheelchair. When I thought about this, I truly regretted the fact that in order to make money and to be a cut above the rest, I had ruined my health through overwork. As I thought it over, aggrieved, painful, bitter tears gushed from my eyes and I couldn't help calling out. Oh God, save me. Why is my life so tiring, so hard? And it was right then when I was helpless and in pain that God's salvation of the last days came down to me. After I left the hospital, by chance, I came to know two sisters who believed in God. Through reading God's words together with them and having fellowship in the truth, I understood that nothing in the world is naturally formed, but created by God. That God is the master of the entire universe that man's destiny is also in God's hands, that God has guided mankind all along, supplied mankind, and constantly looks after and protects mankind. But I was puzzled and sought their help. If God is the master who controls our destiny, and we ought to be happy and joyful, then why do we still suffer illness and pain? Why is life so hard? So where then does life's pain come from? Can you explain that to me? Of course. Dujia, this question mm. that you've raised, I used to mull over this before I believed in God. Yes. Why is there illness and pain in our lives? Why is life so hard and so tiring? 
Regardless of whether a person for the whole of his life is rich or poor, ordinary or eminent, how is it that he cannot escape being born, growing old, getting sick and dying? I could never find the answer. It was only when I read the Word of God that I found the source of the problem. Has God told us the reason for man's pain? Then tell me, please. Sure. sure. Fine. After we've read the Word of God, you will understand. Almighty God says, Where did the pain of birth, death, illness, and old age present throughout the life of man come from? Because of what did people first have these things? Did man have these things when they were first created? They didn't, did they? So then where did these things come from? These things came after man was tempted by Satan and their flesh became degenerate. Such is the pain of the flesh, the troubles and emptiness of the flesh, and the extreme wretchedness of the whole world. Satan began to torment man after it had corrupted them. After that, man then became more and more degenerate. The illnesses of man were deepened, and their suffering became more and more severe. Man felt more and more of the emptiness the tragedy and the inability to go on living in the world. And so then they felt less and less hope for the world. So, this suffering was then brought on man by Satan. And it only came when man had been corrupted by Satan and became degenerate. These words put it really well. This is the first time I heard it like that. All our pain in life was brought to man by Satan. Mm. Only after Satan corrupted man did it come about. So how did Satan corrupt man? I don't quite understand that part. Can you tell me more about that? Okay. At the beginning when God created man, man listened to God and submitted right. to God. God was with him and he protected him. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was no illness or death. Nothing for man to worry about. Mm -hmm. Man lived free of anxiety in the Garden of Eden, enjoying everything that had been bestowed by God. Mankind lived happily and joyfully under God's guidance. But ever since man was enticed and corrupted by Satan, mm -hmm. mankind betrayed God, no longer obeying Him, but instead heeding Satan. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, mankind lost the care and protection and blessing of God and fell under the domain of Satan. Mm -hmm. For thousands of years, Satan has used heresies like materialism and atheism, even evolution, mm -hmm. as well as absurdities and lies from demons and famous men to deceive people and harm them. Mm -hmm. They say there's no God in the world, even that there's never been a savior. One's destiny is in his own hand, be a cut above the rest and bring glory to your ancestors. Man will do anything to get rich. Money makes the world go round and so on. After mankind accepted these absurdities and heresies, they denied the existence of God, denied God's sovereignty, and they betrayed God. And man's disposition became arrogant and conceited, more and more selfish, crafty, and evil. People amongst themselves schemed and competed against each other for fame, position, and wealth, cheating each other, fighting each other, growing increasingly anxious. Ailments followed, pain came, and then emptiness, emptiness of the heart, came as well. Mm. These pains and anxieties made us feel that man's life in this world was too hard and tiring, too difficult. This all came about after Satan had corrupted man, it was Satan harming us, and it was also the bitter fruit of mankind denying God, distancing itself from God, and betraying God. With regard to how Satan has corrupted mankind, let's have a look at a video of the Word of God, and you'll understand. Oh, good. So what are Satan's sinister motives? You aren't clear, are you? People think there is nothing wrong with learning knowledge, that it is the natural course. They think that to foster lofty ideals or to have ambitions is just called having aspirations, and that this should be the right road for people to follow in life. 
if people can realize their own ideals or make a go of a career in life? Is it not more glorious to live that way? To not only honor one's ancestors in that way, but also leave one's mark on history. Is this not a good thing? This is a good and proper thing in the eyes of worldly people. Does Satan, however, with its sinister motives, lead people down this kind of road and then just call it a day? Of course not. In fact, no matter how lofty man's ideals are, no matter how realistic man's desires are or how proper they may be, all that man wants to achieve, all that man seeks for, is inextricably linked to two words. These two words are vitally important to the life of every person. And these are things Satan intends to instill in man. Which two words are these? One is fame and one is gain. They are fame and gain. Satan uses a very subtle kind of way, a way very much in concert with people's notions. It isn't done in a radical way. Completely unaware of what they're doing, people come to accept Satan's way of living, its rules of living, establishing life goals and direction in life. And in doing so, they also unknowingly come to have ideals in life. No matter how high-minded these ideals in life seem, they are just a pretext that is inextricably linked to fame and gain. Any great or famous person, all people, in fact, anything they pursue in life relates only to these two words, fame and gain. Is this not so? People think that once they have achieved fame and gain, they can then capitalize on them to enjoy high status and great wealth and to enjoy life. Once they have fame and gain, they can then capitalize on them in their pleasure-seeking and unscrupulous enjoyment of the flesh. People willingly, albeit unknowingly, take their bodies, minds, all that they have, their futures and their destinies, and hand them all over to Satan in order to attain the fame and gain they desire. People do this without even a moment's hesitation ignorant of their need to recover it all. Can people still have any control over themselves once they turn to Satan this way and become loyal to it? Certainly not. They are completely and utterly controlled by Satan. They are also completely and utterly unable to free themselves from the quagmire they have sunk down into. Once someone is mired in fame and gain, they no longer seek that which is bright, that which is righteous, or those things that are beautiful and good. This is because the seductive power that fame and gain have over people is too great, and they become things people pursue throughout their lives, even for all eternity without end. Isn't this true? So Satan uses fame and gain to control man's thoughts until all they can think of is fame and gain. They struggle for fame and gain, suffer hardships for fame and gain, endure humiliation for fame and gain, and sacrifice everything they have for fame and gain, and they'll make any judgment or decision to both obtain and maintain fame and gain. In this way, Satan binds man with invisible shackles. These shackles are carried by people, and they have neither the strength nor the courage to throw them off. So people trudge ever onward with great difficulty, unknowingly bearing these shackles. Having heard the word of God, the sisters then told me the facts and explained the truth of Satan's use of fame and gain to corrupt men. I then understood after thousands of years, Satan's use of atheism, materialism, and evolution to deceive and corrupt mankind has reached a peak and led mankind to be distanced from God and to betray God. It was only then that I felt 
that books I had read in the past were all filled with Satan's poison, Satan's philosophy, and Satan's logic. If it were not for the Word of God revealing how Satan and its demons had corrupted mankind, I would still be deceived and controlled by Satan, desperately struggling in darkness. Man has ideals and aspirations, that's correct. But in the process of man trying to satisfy his own ideals, Satan uses all kinds of methods to imbue men with its mode of existence and rules for existence, to entice men to live only for fame and gain. As soon as men are mired in fame and gain, they no longer search for the light and for the things that are of goodness, because the allure of fame and gain is too great for us. And we are so bogged down with it that we have no way of extricating ourselves. This is Satan's shackle, worn on our bodies, and it is Satan's ruse for corrupting men. In order to be a cut above the rest, to earn more money so that others would think highly of me, I had lost my sense of self, become a money-making machine, and even sacrificed my health for the sake of fame and gain without balking at it. I had truly become a slave to money and fame and gain because I was under the control of a mistaken view of life that if I have money, it will make others think highly of me. I made great efforts to struggle on, always wanting to be better, always wanting more. My desires became greater and I was never satisfied and I was only able to stop once I had ruined my own health. The pursuit of fame and gain had made my life so hard and so tiring. If it wasn't for the revelations of the words of Almighty God, I would never have known that my pursuit of wealth and fame and gain were mistaken, that these were other methods Satan uses to harm people and I would never have known about Satan's scheming and sinister motives to corrupt men. After this, the sisters read several more passages of the words of Almighty God to me. And by her talk about the Word of God and the different methods and ways in which Satan corrupts mankind, I understood that by constantly seeking fame and gain over these years, I had become overwhelmed by pain, and in the end, I had fallen ill. All of this pain had originally been created because I had been harmed and corrupted by Satan. Sister Tsin went on to tell me, Well, Satan is God's enemy. It particularly hates God, and it hates mankind created by God. Therefore, everything that it does throughout the world is to deceive mankind and corrupt mankind, using every possible means to entice men to follow the evil trends of the world to be distanced from God and to betray God, to place mankind under its influence, to be enslaved and ravaged by it. This results in the lives of men being desolate and miserable, painful and empty. And it also makes the entire world increasingly dark and all the more evil. And it's already come to mankind having no way to exist. God cannot bear to see mankind being deceived, corrupted and afflicted by Satan. And twice he came as God incarnate to redeem mankind, on the first occasion, he was incarnated as the Lord Jesus and had himself crucified to redeem mankind from sin as a sin offering. In the last days, God is incarnate once more to come among men, to deliver the truth, to purify man and to save man, and to undertake the work of judging man, to save us from the domain of Satan and then to be obtained by God. And from now on, we will no longer be harmed by Satan as long as we receive the word of God, obey the word of God, and practice the word of God, and then we'll understand and obtain the truth from the word of God, and be able to see the various ways that Satan works to corrupt mankind, and see through Satan's evil essence, and at the same time, know God's disposition of righteousness and holiness that does not tolerate man's offense, and develop a heart that reveres God. It's great. In this way, we have the power to forsake Satan, to abandon Satan, throw off the bonds and harm of Satan, and be saved by God, and finally be brought by God into a wonderful destination. When I heard Sister Tsin bear witness to God himself having come among men to deliver the truth and to save man, I was excited. 
I didn't expect that such a person as I, who had never believed in God, could today hear the Word of God and be able to obtain God's salvation. This is such a great blessing, such great grace. I am truly very blessed. And so, I happily received God's work of the last days. After this, Sister Tsin often came to communicate to me the words of God. Slowly, I confirmed over time God's work of the last days. I was able to differentiate a little Satan's ways and methods of harming men. And I understood that the most important thing is to believe in God, read the Word of God, seek the truth, and submit to God's rule and arrangements. Only by living in this way would I receive God's praise, and only then would my life have most meaning and be most happy. Hello. While I was Hi. unwell, Welcome. the sisters of the church often called you. on me. Thank you for coming. Your illness. I did not Please dare to move my careful. waist too much, and a sister with medical skills massaged and cupped me. She also told me which acupuncture points were effective in alleviating my condition. They actively helped me with housework and cared for me as if I were a family member. As a stranger in a foreign country, Sister, the dumplings are done. I was truly, deeply moved Sister to be cared Mom, for today by the sisters, even better than if I were family. I said to them repeatedly, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sisters. No need for thanks. We're family. Yes. Hearing this, I was so moved that I hugged the sisters and wept. From this time on, I felt all the more an inexpressible closeness with the sisters. And I was even more grateful to Almighty God. Thank you. After a while, I got to know a female colleague who had come with her husband to Japan to go all out to make money. Although she had earned some money, her husband's health later suffered, and he had to return to China for treatment. And the result was that he was diagnosed with late-stage cancer. After learning the result, they were no longer in the mood to come to Japan to make money, and their family lived in terror and sorrow. My colleague's misfortune made me feel deeply the fragility and preciousness of man's life. If man did not have life, what was the use in having more money? Can money buy life? People spend their lives chasing after money and fame. They clutch at these straws, thinking they are their only means of support. As if by having them, they could keep on living, could exempt themselves from death. But only when they are close to dying do they realize how distant these things are from them. How weak they are in the face of death and how easily they shatter. How lonely and helpless they are with nowhere to turn to. They realize that life cannot be bought with money or fame. 
that no matter how wealthy a person is, no matter how lofty his or her position is, all people are equally poor and inconsequential in the face of death. They realize that money cannot buy life, that fame cannot erase death, that neither money nor fame can lengthen a person's life by a single minute, a single second. The words of God helped me see more clearly that Satan uses money and fame to bind and control man. Many people fight and battle each other in the pursuit of money and fame, losing their conscience and sense and the dignity of a man and some even ruin their own lives. But we cannot see through Satan's schemes, and we cannot see that money and fame are Satan's methods for harming people. For this reason, we are sucked into this whirlpool from which we cannot extricate ourselves. In spite of ourselves, we are fooled and harmed by Satan. At that moment, I considered how lucky I had been to be able to receive the last day's work of Almighty God. Had I not read the words of Almighty God and understood those truths, I would never have seen through the truth of Satan's use of money and fame to harm people. And sooner or later, I too would have been swallowed up by Satan. Under God's care and protection, before I knew it, my condition began to improve. Now, apart from going to work normally, I often gather together with my brothers and sisters to read the Word of God, to share our own experiences and knowledge, and to learn hymns. My heart feels at ease and peaceful as never before. Almighty God says, when one looks back upon the road one has walked, when one has recollected every phase of one's journey, one sees that at every step, whether one's road was arduous or smooth, God was guiding one's path, planning it out. It was God's meticulous arrangements, His careful planning, that led one, unknowingly, to today. To be able to accept the Creator's sovereignty, to receive His salvation. What great fortune that truly is. Dujia, okay. why don't you read? Yeah. Huh? If one's attitude toward God's sovereignty over human fate is active, then when one looks back upon one's journey, when one truly comes to grips with God's sovereignty, one will more earnestly desire to submit to everything that God has arranged. We'll have more of the determination and confidence to let God orchestrate one's fate to stop rebelling against God. For one sees that when one does not comprehend fate, when one does not understand God's sovereignty, when one gropes forward willfully, staggering and tottering through the fog, the journey is too difficult, too heartbreaking. So when people recognize God's sovereignty over human fate, the smart ones choose to know it and accept it, to bid farewell to the painful days when they tried to build a good life with their own two hands. Instead of continuing to struggle against fate and pursue their so-called life goals in their own manner. I'll read the next passage. Sure. When one has no God, when one cannot see Him, when one cannot clearly recognize God's sovereignty, every day is meaningless, worthless, miserable. Wherever one is, whatever one's job is, one's means of living, and the pursuit of one's goals, 
bring one nothing but endless heartbreak and irrelievable suffering, such that one cannot bear to look back. Only when one accepts the Creator's sovereignty, submits to His orchestrations and arrangements, and seeks true human life, will one gradually break free from all heartbreak and suffering, shake off all the emptiness of life. Thanks be to God. After reading the words of Almighty God, the Word of God is so practical. Each word speaks to the bottom of my heart. I understand from God's Word that God is the Creator and we are His creatures. The life of every person is in the hands of God, under His control and arrangement. All that we obtain in life is under God's control and is preordained by God. Man's rushing about all over the place is certainly not a deciding factor. As much as God bestows on us, that's how much we can obtain. If God doesn't bestow it upon us, no matter how much we work, it will be work in vain. It is just like the sayings. Man plants the seed, but heaven decides the harvest. Man proposes, God disposes. That's why, in our lives, we should obey the Creator's control and His plan for us. That is the secret to real happiness in life. That is what life should be. At the same time, I also understand that it doesn't matter how much wealth a person has or how high a position they hold, because these are just the worldly possessions of a person. In devoting yourself to the pursuit of fame and gain, what you obtain in the end is completely empty and full of pain, and the final outcome is being consumed by Satan. I thought back on how I was controlled by the mistaken idea that in life I had to be in the upper class, and how I had sought to be a cut above the rest all along the way. I had thought that I could have a happy life that way and have the respect and envy of others. But I hadn't expected that what I would get instead was pain and bitterness. I didn't have the slightest peace or happiness. I already experienced that painful path. Now that I have read the Word of God, I understand God's will. I no longer wish to do battle with destiny, and even less do I desire a pursuit of fame and gain. I know that is no longer a life that I want. I've resolved to embark on a different path in life, to start anew. I only wish to obey God's control and arrangement, to hand over to God completely the rest of my life for Him to arrange, to strive to be a person who obeys God, who truly lives for God, who lives to repay God's love. What else? Now, I work for three yes. to four hours each That'll day. Coming right up. My boss is Japanese. And did you add these Although we have language difficulties, oh, my boss okay. takes good care That's of me. Yes, Whenever she tells me much. to do something, she always uses simple words that I can understand. She never gives me any pressure. Yes, thank ah, you. I know fine. that this is God's oh, pity on me and His blessing. I feel very grateful. Oh. So nice. At the same time, I understand even better now that if man listens to God's word and submits to God's control and plan for him, only then will he have a relaxed and joyful life. Whenever I am alone, I often think back on my course of how I came before God. If it weren't for my illness, I would never have halted my pursuit of money and fame. I would still have been nothing but a complete money-making machine until I was cruelly killed off by Satan without ever being aware. Satan used fame and gain to harm me and caused me to become ill. While Almighty God, through my illness, led me to find Him, enabling me through the Word of God to see through Satan as the chief culprit in the corruption of man, 
and to see clearly the schemes of Satan using wealth and fame to corrupt man and to consume man, which led me to see through many things in the world. From this time onwards, I often read the Word of God, and the more I read, the more my heart brightens, and without knowing it, I understand many truths. I know from where man came and where he's going. I also know the source of man's sinning. I understand how God saves mankind stage by stage, what man should live for, how he can live a meaningful life, and so on. I understand now that it was thanks to disaster that I received so many blessings. God says, When some people have just begun to believe in God, it is because of illness. This illness is God's grace for you. Without it, you would not believe in God. And if you did not believe in God, then you wouldn't have come this far. And thus, even this grace is the love of God. Under the guidance of God's Word, I've thrown off the bonds of Satan and have the right outlook on life. I'm now walking on the right path in life, and my heart feels truly free. God really is so wise, so omnipotent. I thank Almighty God with all my heart for loving me and saving me. There's so much in my heart I want to say to you, oh God. I enjoy life every day after I've met you Your words like spring water Moistening my parched soul Leading me to reflect on your love And not to forget what you've entrusted me I did not know where I was from It's like I'd forgotten you but inside was still a desire to find and return to the Lord Finally hearing your voice, I return to your family Here I found the value of life and the reason for my creation There's so much in my heart, I wanna say to you, oh God I enjoy life every day after I've met you Your words like spring water Moistening my parched soul Leading me to reflect 